Hi everyone. Lately I've been interested in decoding uh, signals with my oscilloscope here. Things such as SPI and I2C and UART communications between my uh, Arduino and my computer or between uh, Raspberry Pi and an Arduino, things of that sort. So I decided to do a quick video and show you how to decode UART on the Arduino, just communication from the Arduino and my computer. First using my benchtop oscilloscope, I've got a Regal DS2072A and also a much lower cost oscilloscope, this is a PC oscilloscope, the OSC482 and I'll be decoding the exact same UART communication between my Arduino Uno and my computer and see how these two scopes decode that signal. So I'll start first with my benchtop scope and then have a look at what I can get decoded with my uh, with a virtual PC oscilloscope. Let's begin. Okay, so the way I'm going to make this work is, as I said, to by connecting the Arduino Uno to my computer just the regular way via the USB port. And then I'm using the oscilloscope probes, I've got a two channel oscilloscope. So I've got the two probes connected directly to the TX and RX pins on the Arduino. And as you probably know, these pins here are the same ones that are used by the USB interface that eventually uh, allow the communication with my computer to take place. So on uh, the sketch and programming side, this is the sketch that is running right now on the Arduino. It's very simple. All it does is to check to see if there is something in the serial port and then send it right back. And I also have a special character, uh, it's a hex 08 to indicate the packet end. On the other side, on my computer, I've got a little processing sketch that is running and all it does is to send uh, whatever I type on the keyboard, it will send it to the uh, Arduino via the serial port and then read it back. So it looks like this. I'm going to press a key on my keyboard. I'm going to press A and there you go. You see XA has been sent and then it bounced back from the Arduino to my computer and you can see it here. It says A. So this is the traffic that I'll be using my oscilloscope to capture and then also to decode. All right, so on the oscilloscope side, uh, I've already calibrated my scope to be able to capture the signal, but let's say that we begin f straight from the beginning. So I'm going to clear all my settings, uh, just mess it up completely, so lose all my settings. And um, I want to go back to, actually I want to uh, calibrate the horizontal and vertical uh, settings, so the time scale and the voltage scale to something that um, uh, will allow my scope to capture the signal and then to decode it. So I need to give it first a sample. So I'm going to hold down the A key or whatever other key on the keyboard I want so that my scope can start getting a signal from the RX and TX pins here on the Arduino. And I'm going to press on the auto button and maybe that will help with the calibration a little. Uh, Let's see, okay, so now you can start seeing the signal here on the yellow channel, which is the RX. This is where uh, my Arduino receives data from the computer. And you can see it's kind of a, a little bit ahead of the blue channel, which is the response. It is a transmission from the Arduino back to my computer. So the yellow channel looks, looks quite clean. Uh, which means that the voltage scale should be around 200 millivolts. So I'm going to fix the blue channel to match that. So 200 millivolts, get a nice clean signal here and just uh, adjust it so that the yellow is up on top. So this is the, this, the, the signal that the computer is sending to my Arduino and this is the response. So let's try again now. Okay, so you can see yellow ahead of time and then the blue comes back as a response. Now the time scale I've got it at 2 milliseconds that looks okay because you can see there's plenty of space around the two sides so I can actually increase the time scale by a bit actually now I've got to 1 millisecond yeah 
even more. There you go, even better now. You can see I can utilize more of the width of the display to be able to see the signal. Of course, this isn't very helpful. Um, I have to keep the button down in order to keep sending uh, bytes to, to the Arduino and then it just disappears. So what I want to do is to use the triggering feature on the scope so that the oscilloscope will be able to detect traffic and then uh, start reading and storing the data in its memory and then hold the display still so that I can examine it and decode it. So for that I'm going to go into my triggering menu here and tell my scope that I want it to capture a signal of type RS232. This is the UART signal and there's other features of the signal that I can specify. So uh, let's see channel 1 which is the yellow channel is the one that um, uh, will start uh, or actually will trigger the scope to start uh, storing data and capturing the data from the of the traffic it's the as I said the communication from the computer to the scope so I'm happy with the source of the trigger to be channel 1 channel 1 is the yellow channel uh, the polarity I've tested that earlier is invert on the Arduino so it goes from high to low when there's no communication the uh, the level on the UART lines is 5 volts and high and that should be uh, good to go all right so I've set the trigger I'm going to press on the single capture mode now I'm going to press button A on my keyboard and there's a capture of actual there, there is a byte going and returning I'll do that again uh, I've moved the positioning of the time scope a little bit to the left so I can capture the end of the signal here as well let's do this one more time all right I go a little more to the left so that the blue channel uh, is included. All right, there you go. So there is my captured data. You can see that this channel, oh, sorry, have the, the data in the yellow channel, the waveform in the, the yellow channel, and the one in the blue channel are obviously copies of each other because the uh, Arduino sends back whatever it receives. You can see that on the screen, my little um, processing sketch bounces in this the latest letter was letter C back and forth all right and now the next thing that I want to do is now that I've got the waveform of the TX and the RX channels on the scope I want to decode this information so I've got two decode of uh, channels here on the scope I'm going to use one of them going to tell it that I'd like to decode one of those protocols so I'll go for the RS232 protocol and I'm going to turn on the decoding and you can see that because of the uh, of the calibration that I've already done to it it, it shows me the uh, decoded uh, value of this waveform as hexadecimal 61 which is the letter A in ASCII code that you can see here as well on the little window of my processing application. Let's do one more. I'm going to press B on my keyboard and there is 62 which is the hex for lowercase letter B. Um, let's try one more. I'm going to try number one which is hexadecimal 31. You can see that here. A few other options that I can set here in the decoding options are uh, apart from you know, which channel is channel 1 and channel 2 RX and TX I can set the board rate uh, the polarity which for the Arduino as I said earlier is inverted so when the Arduino is not transmitting on the UX and uh, TX channels its voltage is 5 volts right so that's uh, it drops down when it wants to transmit so that's an inverted polarity other options have to do with the endian we've got data bits stop bits even odd so quite a few options here but i can also specify whether i want the scope to capture packet uh, transmissions so a packet is um, uh, a transmission that includes multiple bytes and at the end of that byte 
of the packet, I should say, is a special character that marks the packet end. And um, I can choose one of those in this particular scope to be the packet end. You can see here in my uh, Arduino sketch, uh, this line is actually commented out in the version of the sketch that is currently running on my, on my Arduino. Uh, but if I uncomment this line and upload, then I can have multiple bytes coming from the um, Arduino to the uh, to the computer and at the end of those bytes I can send out the OA special character that can be captured here detected by the scope so that the scope knows that that is the end of the packet anyway I'm not going to do this demonstration now it's uh, quite a different topic that I can cover in an actual lecture <laughs> hopefully in the future all right, I think that's a bit about it with the benchtop scope. Let's move over now and have a look at the same operation, but now using my PC scope. Let's try this out. I've connected the OSC 482 scope from Lotto Instruments to the uh, Arduino. I've got its two probes, the RX and the TX, connected to pins 0 and 1. So RX goes to uh, the RX probe goes to the RX pin, which is pin 0 on the Arduino, and TX goes to pin 1. And they're both connected to the same ground, and obviously that's important. The software that comes with this scope only works on Windows, so I'm running it here inside the virtual machine, and I'm running version 5.10 of this software. And uh, a lot of instruments updates this quite frequently with new features, uh, so check it out. Uh, occasionally just to see what else uh, you'll be able to do so the hardware is quite capable it's just um, what I found so far is that the restrictions are on the software side but still um, with what is available in this version of the software uh, it is quite impressive with what you can do I'm just going to focus here on one thing and that is decoding the RS232 UART communication just like I did with my Regal benchtop scope earlier so uh, i've got it um, uh, working here you can see that the device is enabled i can stop it or start it as soon as i start it i, I start seeing a signal i'm running the same exact firmware or um, sketch on the arduino and i've got the same processing program running on my computer i just press uh, a on my keyboard and you can see the uh, the waveform of this communication popping up in the scope and I've ranked up, uh, cranked up the refresh rate of the waveform to uh, 50, like the highest possible setting and um, that's how I know that's how I know that there is traffic. Now again just like with the benchtop scope I need to be able to uh, use a trigger to capture uh, communication so then I can decode it because otherwise it just flies off and I won't be able to see anything useful even even now it's down here where my cursor is at the moment you can see that I have enabled decoding and the software here is trying to decode this signal on the in the blue channel so this is channel A all right so have a look at the decode tab right here I've got it turned on as I said if you drop down this menu you see the two options UART and I2C uh, from what uh, people at Lotto Instruments tell me that it's probably going to be an SPI option here as well in a uh, future version of the software it's not here yet and I also had trouble decoding I2C um, the standard I2C from the Arduino I wasn't able to decode successfully although it works with the benchtop instrument so uh, this is just one of the little issues with this version of the software I hope that this is going to be fixed soon anyway let's have a look uh, at the UART decoding uh, I've already set up uh, the decoder with these settings, the baud rate, the data bits, the parity stop bits and the other options, bit invert, data bits invert and enable voltage and these actually work with the Arduino. So let's go and set a trigger so I want the scope to wait for 
a trigger of the signal going from um, low to high that seems to work uh, this software and this PC scope don't have the more advanced features of the Regal where you can actually tell it to look for an RS-232 signal or for an I2C2 uh, I signal and it would know what it looked like. So the options here are far simpler. It's just the upslope or downslope and that's about it. So basically a change in signal is what we're looking for. And I'll set it to a single trigger and now it's waiting so let's go to processing i'm going to press number one and there you go it picked it up number one is hexadecimal 31 in the ascii code and you can see that it's been decoded 31 in the ascii code it's a signal going in or the, the traffic going in uh, data received by the arduino and then data going out of the arduino back to my computer that's it um, let's try one more just for the fun of it going to press single on the scope software now it's waiting for that transition from low to high and I'm going to press number two again I had to do it twice for some reason didn't pick up the first one and it picked it up here you can see there's a little problem here I'm not sure what happened in the uh, receive the yellow waveform looks like it's damaged maybe it didn't pick it up properly uh, not so sure uh, let's try one more time and I'm, I'm gonna go for number three uh, there you go yes so number three is 33 hexadecimal and it decoded that properly and it appears correct as well okay that's about it I hope that you enjoyed this little demo and you learned something new so my objective here was fairly simple i wanted to show you one of the features that even budget oscilloscopes have these days uh, this is not uh, the feature that i showed you the the uart decoding capability is not something that you need to spend a lot of money on it's not something that only more expensive instruments can do but uh, cheaper instruments lower cost instruments can do as well and it just gives you a, a glimpse into how machines talk to each other how voltage becomes information and then how information becomes voltage and gets transmitted you are able now to see that happening on the wire instead of having to use a printouts and your sketches to be able to do things like debugging or confirming that uh, device is still communicating anyway apart from that let me know what else you'd like me to look into i'm, I'm spending a little bit of time uh, more than usual actually uh, with um, oscilloscopes i am thinking of uh, creating a course that uh, can teach people interested in these instruments some of the more basic more commonly used features but also some of the more esoteric like harder to understand how some of these features work so i plan to do a lot of experimentation and then um, hopefully produce something that you can learn from let me know in particular what kind of experiments or what kind of features or capabilities you'd like me to investigate and I'll do my best to do so.